Everybody, welcome back to Shock and Sherlock. I'm your host, Herschel Gillis. Today is day four of the 31 Days of Horror Reviews. Um, why am I dressed in the same shirt? It's almost as if I'm recording these uh, beforehand because I'm going to Cinema Wasteland this weekend. Um, anyway, today I'm covering 2015's Makuro Trilogy by Katsumi Sasaki, um, recently released by Error 444 on Blu-ray. That's how I heard about it as well, along with the fantastic Shintaro Kago uh, artwork on the cover of that, which I can't probably show on YouTube, so keeping that separate for now. Anyway, the Makuro Trilogy is a sort of trilogy of loosely related short films by director Katsumi Sasaki, um, related in the way of themes, essentially. Um, each one sort of has similar themes of violence and revenge. Um, I'm going to talk about these a little bit piece by piece and then get my overall thoughts because my feelings towards the overall experience kind of apply towards the three, so I want to go over each individual segment about what they're about um, and then highlights of those towards that. First one is Apartment Inferno. Um, it's like this, these body like the horror type of thing. Um, you see a lot of murder, people cleaning up a body and killing people. It's like this group of three people um, doing so. Um, it's they're like essentially like cleaners for killers, but they're also so like somewhat involved. Um, but yeah, the second one is Sweet Home Inferno, uh, which is about this family. This young woman is acting out a little bit, as a teenager does, but her family thinks she's possessed, um, and take matters into her own hands after they're told by this, like, religious leader, sort of, or, and, like, a religious person, not super clear on, like, who he really is, but he tells them how to do this, and has a plot twist at the end, and then the third one is just, like, a mother, um, which is much more... I would say it's probably the nastiest of the three of these. Um, about a mother and daughter um, and their involvement with this group of young men that goes south. Um, so first, right off the bat, these are splatter short films through and through. They're extremely gory, extremely violent, extremely over the top. Um, they do all have sort of an element of dark humor to them in some ways just like a mother has a little bit less i think it's much more serious at least compared to the other two um but the gore in these is crazy it's also extremely well done it's practical it looks great um sweet home inferno probably has the most gore of the three of these and it is done very well uh that one is also i would say probably the most darkly humorous it's super entertaining um apartment inferno i think is the most ambitious of the three we get a couple of things that i'd actually never seen before um i don't want to spoil those here but like seeing um it has a different sort of look of like afterlife and its implications a little bit i feel like that's not that much of a spoiler and just like a mother i think has the strongest acting so they each have their own Strength. Just like a mother is probably my favorite of the three. Um, the relationship between the mother and the daughter portrayed in this, despite it being like a splatter movie and there being gore everywhere throughout this, um, I think the central like mother and daughter relationship is well done and interesting. It makes you care about them, and despite like these are short films, um, in a short period of time we are led to care about those two characters a lot. Sweet Home Inferno. Same thing with the characters. I think the acting is and storyline is not as strong as just like a mother but is pretty funny um reminded me of something like takashi Miike's work um apartment inferno also has strong acting um i think it also has the strongest physical acting in that one actually a lot of the story is not told through dialogue which was interesting to watch it's also a pretty quick experience the three of these only add up to about 70 minutes and each of the three segments have their own unique flair, pays super well, and as they're short films, none of them overstay their welcome whatsoever. I actually wanted this to go on a little bit longer. Um, just like a mother's the longest of the three, I believe it's around 30 minutes. Um, 
So I kind of wish, especially Super Inferno, I wish we were given slightly more with that because the payoff is really good in that, but I think overall these are really, really solid. Uh, if you're a fan of J-horror, like, splat, like Japanese splatter specifically, you're going to be really into these. It's super fun. Um, this is one of my favorite things that Air 4444 has put out. Um, it's very unique and, yeah, highly recommend it. It's a great film, or really trilogy of films, but it's packed together as one film. Um, but the Halloween season as well. You got the Afterlife, you got Witchcraft, you got Rape and Revenge. You got it all there. And they're all done in a way that's not too off-putting. These are a good, like, middle ground between extreme and more, you know, mainstream stuff. They have extreme gore, but they're much more light than a lot of stuff. So, yeah, give it a go. Highly recommend picking it up. I'm sure they are sold out on Air4444's website, so anyway, you can watch this, uh, do so. Um, hopefully they restock it for people who missed out as well. I'm hoping for that Red to Kill release to be restocked because I missed that one, but that's a story for another day. So, anyway, that's been day four of the 31 days of horror reviews. Um, hopefully I have something tomorrow. If not, I'll have a couple videos on Sunday or Monday. It's going to be a busy weekend, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, as always, I've been your host, Herschel Gillis, signing off for today. Zero thoughts, zero things, zero brain cells, and zero planning. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Keep your notifications on. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.